prepare to be captivated by the business story of the week, hosted by me, Shaheen Shan. Join us on a journey through the twists and turns of entrepreneurial triumphs and setbacks. Immerse yourself in the narrative and witness the magic that turns dreams into reality. This is Business Story of the Week. And welcome back, folks. Welcome back to Business Story of the Week. I am your host, Joshua. And like we always do, we are going to get into today's, you know, theme of business strategies, innovations, and boy, do we have quite an innovation in our hands today. We are going to have our guest. His name is Michael Howie, originally hailing from Perham, Minnesota. Michael has embarked on his educational journey by studying jazz, am I correct? Studying jazz, studio performance at MSUM, exploring his passion for music. Later, he pursued a degree in computer science at the University of the People. That doesn't sound like a real university, Michael. <laughs> he used to talk to me about that. University of the People. Beyond his professional achievements, though, Michael is also a marathon runner and a developer and project manager, product manager rather, at Pavewise, an intelligent construction software tailored for the asphalt industry. That I need to I need to spell that out for our audiences today, what we're really dealing with right now. Michael collaborates closely with Pavewife CEO Bryce Ruori, who saw how the industry worked and more importantly how it did it. So he saw the projects, time and money were being lost, mismanagement, weather interruptions. So what they did is they created an intelligent construction software, Pavewise, with working or while working with leading developers like Michael that we have today, they are looking to revolutionize project management, eliminate downtime, and enhance communication across teams, ultimately paving the way for better roads and increasing efficiency across the industry. One of their leading developers is here with us today, Michael Howie. Michael, thank you for being with us. How are you doing today, brother? I'm doing well, Josh. Thanks for having me. I'm happy to be here. Fantastic. All right. So before I really get into this, you know, first, I always like to, I always like the audience to get to know our guests first a little bit. You know, before getting to the nitty gritty of it, I like to ask where the journey began. What is the story of Michael Howie? We did a little bit of introduction to her. It's quite interesting. You did jazz. You studied jazz and computer science at the University of the People for the people. And how, but you know, you went from, you went from jazz, marathon running, computer science, and now to construction. What happened along the way? Yeah. Um, well, first of all, shout out to University of the People. Uh, it is a it is a legitimate university. It is an accredited higher education institution that I wow. believe is based in California, but um, they charge a hundred dollars per course, basically. Oh wow! So it's a it's a pretty reasonably priced option for people. So it is wow. it is a legitimate program. So I, I have to <laughs> I have to say that it is it is, but. Uh, yeah, I when I, when I was a kid, I played a lot of music, um, and I, mm-hmm. I ran cross country. So the the marathon running persisted. I'm actually I'm training for my first ultra marathon right now. So it's Whoa. 50 miles. Whoa. Uh, that'll be that'll be intense. Um, yeah, but I, I was I was in Perm in high school. I went to Moorhead, uh, which is where MSUM is at to to study music, and mm-hmm. I I actually currently am in Mexico City. I ended up in, in Mexico about eight years ago. So I'm down south of the border working uh, remotely. And uh, I taught English for a little bit. And when the pandemic hit, yeah. I realized I didn't want to do that forever. So uh, <laughs> so I went back to school and got a degree uh-huh. in computer science, did uh-huh. a little bit of programming and uh, was working at a uh, kind of a agency that built MVPs for different companies and Mm -hmm. ended up meeting Bryce through that Mm -hmm. experience at at a, at a place called Codalation. Shout out to Mm -hmm. Codalation in 
in Fargo, North Dakota. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah, met Bryce and fell in love with what he was trying to do and, and ultimately with him. I mean, he's a very wow. bright guy and, and uh, kind of a, a visionary of sorts. And so I, I believed mm-hmm. in what he was doing. I don't didn't know anything about construction, let alone asphalt, really, uh-huh. when I came to board. Uh-huh. And uh, I've since done my, my reading and my homework and... I'm an asphalt enthusiast. I don't. I don't think I'm an expert quite yet, but I, I'm an. I'm an enthusiast of asphalt. Yeah, that's fantastic. I mean, it still. It still feels like it translated very well. You know, you you went from this sort of. It also feels fresh. You mentioned that you got a degree right after a pandemic, and you you kind of shifted and you pivoted, and now you you you're in this innovative field, so to speak, or you guys are but the forefront of innovating this field right now with PaveWise. And re- allow me to really get deeper into that, Michael, about PaveWise when it comes to, you know, the origins of PaveWise, well, focusing inefficiencies. Um, you know, one of the key figures we find PaveWise is their challenging or encountering the challenges through the development process. And how do you think, these were better overcome? How do you think these were better solved through a software solution? How did that help? So, so PaveWise, we have to, as, as far as the origin story, uh, we have to go back um, about five years. Uh, mm-hmm. Bryce worked in paving construction, asphalt paving construction for about 10, 11 years as a project wow. manager ultimately wow. founded his own uh, consulting business. When he was mm-hmm. consulting on these projects, he would get bring into, brought into high risk, uh, a lot of mm-hmm. highway and interstate construction projects to kind mm-hmm. of find out why the project wasn't going well, to put it in mm-hmm. layman's terms. So maybe they were having compaction issues or density mm-hmm. issues or what have you. Mm-hmm. He developed a lot of the engines and drivers that we still use in PaveWise today right. during the, that five years. Um, the, wow. the big, as far as the inefficiencies, um, you can you can find shops that still use pen and paper for a lot of their processes, which we know. Oh. In Especially in construction. Oh, yeah. And when you're out on a construction site, I mean, coffee gets spilt. There's a bunch of big machines. It rains. Yes. Uh-huh. Pen and paper is pretty vulnerable to being destroyed. So, um, of course. <laughs> you know, you, you can use Excel uh, for some mm-hmm. of it, but, but what Bryce ultimately found is that there's, there's a simplified way to get transparency and communication across mm-hmm. a lot of different parties using tech. And so mm-hmm. one of the things that PaveWise is focused on is bringing in state DOTs onto the same platform as a contractor so that there's right. less back and forth via text, email, uh, phone calls. I mean, it is mm-hmm. the way that that information is disseminated is really archaic uh, to, yeah. to put it. Right. I, I don't disrespect anyone, but but it is to somebody coming from the tech world. It's it needs a little of a course. little TLC. Of course. So yeah. that's that's really like I'm trying to just picture this, right? Construction, pen and paper, everyone's measuring with their papers and their rulers and all that. So of course I just, I already have my pencil in here. I'm just gonna write down what I need to write down, but it's true. Like it's, it's, it's very archaic. It's very slow. It's very redundant. It's, it's, it's an easy way to lose everything. And it feels to me as if it's like, it, it also is a challenge to get people to use it, to get people in construction to use it because first of all you got these these guys are these guys didn't really grow up with computers right they're not really tech savvy your average construction guy isn't known to be tech savvy so to speak right that is just the imagination for most of common people or most like say most most of our audience and listeners but so i feel like it's also an obstacle it felt like it must have been a challenge to get people from going from their pen and paper to getting on the computer and just putting it all in there. And there's also another barrier and challenge of actually learning the software. How did you guys overcome that? Great, 
question. Um, I, I would say, um, yeah, if anyone that's interested in technology adoption and what that life cycle looks like, there's a really, I, I could almost maybe call it a classic book now called Crossing the Chasm. Um, and crossing I, I the Chasm. Crossing the Chasm. The Chasm refers to, we have uh, sort of our innovators that are on the bleeding edge of technology that use it mm -hmm. because they it's cool and they're they're going to use it regardless even if it's kind of cumbersome and needs a little mm -hmm. more love before we can take it to a bigger market mm -hmm. you have some early adopters and then there's the chasm which is where a lot of startups in the tech world fail to get bigger adoption into more of a mainstream marketplace um i would say that in asphalt paving and and in we'll call it horizontal construction or the dirt world uh, if you will, right. we're, we're talking about roads and bridges and flat things, basically. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. I think I think what we see is at like enterprise levels where companies are really big. They have they they have and they use and they have for years used a lot mm -hmm. of tech. Um, mm -hmm. Kind of where we don't see a lot of tech is in some of the like mid to smaller size shops. And right. Right. I, I, I do, I, maybe I'm not painting a clear enough picture as far or an accurate picture as far as not everyone is using just pen and paper. I mean, some guys of are course. using Excel. Uh, some guys are using Google Drive to share documents, uh, maybe some yes. Dropbox. Um, but a, a big part of what we're trying to do is in terms of like, how are we bringing that to them is just to show them the numbers because Bryce yeah, used right engines and drivers for five years in his right. consultancy mm -hmm. we have proof that using this software does x y and z for mm -hmm. right. we we know that it's not a secret you know it's not something mm -hmm. we have to discover which kind of puts us at an advantage um mm -hmm. so as far as adoption right all these guys have phones out in the field uh paidwise right. is a pwa a progressive web app so we can run it wow um, on any device that has an internet browser. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And so it's not as, it's not as big of a challenge. If, if you're on right. Facebook uh, out that in the field, sense. you can use PayPal. Okay. That's my sense. That's fantastic. It means that, okay. So first of all, I want to highlight that. Thank you for educating me and educating the rest of the audience and listeners out there that at the industry, asphalting, you know, horizontal construction in general, does use a lot of tech. Of course, now it makes sense of why. Of course, like it would require a lot of tech behind it to get it moving. But at the same time, it also sounds like you guys have designed something very efficient, something that is easy for everyone to just use and something just easy to transition into. I'd love to highlight a little bit there the, the, the efficiencies, the improvements that you have guys have made. Because, you know, like our audiences and listeners, you know, we're not really like asphalt builders. If I'm going to, if I'm going to like go off from what I know, what I know is like, I'm looking at, I mean, these are just roads, man. Like you just, it's flat bed. You should probably, you dig out the path and, you know, just make a straight line out of that. But, you know, we, I live in a very fairly small, a small city and the roads here are also quite a challenge to build. Um, but of course, on the on the lower flatlands, you've got your highways, you've got a bunch of roads that's going on here. And I feel like we are at a phase in society, or at least in the modern time today, that we are rapidly expanding our transportation means. So now my question is like, um, first of all, where does Paypwise come into that picture? But how has the horizontal construction industry made it more efficient so that we can keep up with the demand of the growing transportation of a modern society. Yeah. So, um, in the, in the U S I know that about, I, I think the statistic is 98% of roads are paved with asphalt. So it's a, it's a substantial wow. number. Um, wow. it's enormous industry. Wow. And, the, I would say the, 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 the biggest pain point is trying to keep up with maintaining roads. You know, new oh, construction okay. roads is, uh, 
if you're, if you're in a developing country, maybe there's more new construction, but we, we have a lot of the main veins sort of carved out as far as mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it now becomes a function of maintaining them. And then also when we're building roads to build them in a way that they last longer and right. PaveWise does a lot for that. So what we're, mm -hmm. we're trying to do is build roads that last longer, that require less maintenance and are therefore more cost effective right. for government right. at a state level, mm -hmm. at a federal level. Uh, mm -hmm. and, then, and then also in the states, um, most, most states, most state DOTs or Department of Transportation, most state DOTs offer what are called uh, uh, quality incentives to paving contractors. Because right. the state knows that a better quality road will last longer and ultimately in the long term will be cheaper to maintain. And oh, so okay. a lot of the buy-in when we're if circling back just briefly to like adoption and that life cycle, uh, a lot of that comes from being able to explain to the contractor, we're going to be able to improve the amount of incentives that you get. You're going to make right. more money. And right. also to go to the DOT and say, you're going to, you're going to have a better quality road. So right. you're going to pay less to maintain that road over the long term. So, um, PaveWise does a lot kind of, I, I would say in that space. So we, we mm -hmm. have, we have, um, we have engines that tell us how much productivity will be impacted based on the weather. So it's, I'm surprised I haven't used that word yet in, in our discussion, but weather is we'll get we there say, we say in weather and construction weather is the worst business part mm -hmm. mm -hmm. because we can't control it uh yes. and it will absolutely torpedo a project so what pavewise is trying to do is just give state dot's and contractors more insight and more realistic expectations as to the role that weather plays in the project and so by doing that, we're able to say to a state DOT, we need to give the contractor an extension mm -hmm. on this project because mm -hmm. there were 15 rain days. So the timeline right. was drastically interrupted by circumstances completely outside of the control of the contractor, i.e. weather. So That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, that is a perfect transition to my next question, because now I'm going to ask like, how is PaveWise pushing these boundaries? And I wanted to, of course, our audience and listeners to know that part of these boundaries or these challenges you guys are overcoming are these unpredictable weathers. I I watched one of your videos that you highlight these one of these features in your uh, in your system where weather is a central part of um, any project really, and your weather prediction system allows you guys to deliver on the projects you know, adjust in these weather conditions. It's fantastic. It's a great, um, it's a great innovative, you know, solution, so to speak. Um, I wanted to ask other ways that you feel like PaveWise is pushing these boundaries in the horizontal construction industry, but in particular as well, um, how do you see the future of horizontal industry improving? And oh, by the way, this this was my actual question. Um, I looked it up. I may have failed with my research, but it seems like you guys are the only guys in this space. Are you? Um, yeah. So there, there's there's a lot to unpack there. Let's let's start with uh, kind of some of the other pain points of the industry right now. Um, First, so outside of weather, which I I, I would say that mm -hmm. that's that's probably one of the, the, the biggest focuses of the PaveWise. One of the other big issues is workforce. Um, the, the fact of the matter is most people don't want to stand out in a hundred degree weather with a rake and help make a road. That's, you know, or to sit on a roller for 16 hours a day and do the same thing. It's kind of monotonous Fantastic. and it's, it's very hard work. Um, so, that that's that's one one pain point another pain point is when we're talking about how long it takes for these contractors to get paid by the state right. industry standard right. in the u.s is 135 days wow. so 
complete the project, you're still paying people for 135 days. So it's, it, oh my. it's a long time. Um, with, with, with being able to get everybody on a centralized platform to allow for that communication to become a little more streamlined, we, our assumption is we can cut that in half. And I think from there we can get it even quicker. So that, that's, that's another area. Um, and then I think one, one of the other spaces, probably I would, I would assume like most of your listeners maybe don't even know this is a, a thing. We have to have some kind of quality control on these roads. Okay. How do we, how do we know that the road is quality? So we, we test for the density of the road using okay. these gates and they're giant boxes that somebody manually walks down the road, sets on the street, takes what we call yeah. a shot and gets yeah. the density reading. We're yeah. also doing things to in incorporate and integrate with this technology so that that shot, instead of it needing to be emailed out to a project manager, comes directly into the platform in real time. Wow. Okay. So, um, yeah, I, I, you, you had asked about the future. I don't know how we're doing on time. I, I, I'd be happy to touch on that as well, but you, you, you let me know how we're doing on time. Yeah, you're fine. Actually, let me try to wrap it up in such a way that it's, you know, that it's, uh, I do always wrap up with that question. But first of all, let's start with, um, are you guys only in this space right now? Are you guys the leading innovators when it comes to software solutions and horizontal construction? But other than that, of course, I feel like competition is good, right? So how do you see the, you know, future of horizontal construction going forward? As far as competition goes with regards to handling weather impacts to productivity, mm -hmm. I am not currently aware of anyone else that's doing that. Now there, there, there could be, but I'm not aware. There of it. Could be so we're okay. Pretty waters in that in that regard. Um, mm -hmm. As far as other project management tools, the big 800 pound gorilla in construction software is a company called Procore, um, and right, Procore okay. is a robust set of tools that does all mm -hmm. kinds of things. More mm -hmm. so geared towards, uh, I would say, vertical construction. Um, right. As far as the future of horizontal construction, because of that workforce piece that we just touched on, I think what we're going to see is a move towards autonomous vehicles in the construction space. Right. Um, and so, currently, we're 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 moving that direction to get at a minimum semi-autonomous equipment out on sites so that right. we we can we can let a robot build the road in precisely wow yeah wow and you think that is a very possible future in the next five ten years i i don't i don't think it's a function of it being possible like the technology exists it's a function of wow. how much red tape has to get cut through to allow for that wow. to happen right I think the timeline on that, uh, you know, low end, probably three years, high end, maybe okay. six or seven. That's fantastic. That must really excite you being very fresh on the industry is starting off. Let's go. I for the dev guy, the tech guy. I can't wait. <laughs> Michael, I want to, I want to ask that question, which is a great question for you. You know, I wrap up to this question. What is the future aspirations of Michael? How do you see yourself in this industry being excited with the future tech innovations? But what is the future for Michael Howie? I will stay with Pavewise and continue to do my damnedest to contribute to their efforts for as long as I can. I, I believe in what Pavewise is doing and I, I want to see it through to the end, whatever the end is. And I hope that it's, you know, not anytime soon. And beyond that, I have, I have no idea. We'll, we'll just, we'll just keep kind of going with the flow, man. <laughs> well, fantastic. You know, at least uh, let's hope there's, there isn't an end of the road, you know, to these things. It, let's, let's hope this the road keeps going. And for you, Howie, maybe a, a few more ultra marathons along the way wouldn't hurt. 
definitely. Yeah, I want to. I want to get a, a fifty miler, and then I, I oh, think wow. we'll get a miler at some point. That's fantastic. All right. Well, Howie, thank you so much for your time. I want to, you know, shout out to the audience and listeners and give you this one last opportunity, by the way, to wrap this up real quick. Where can we find you? Where can we find Bryce? Where can we connect with you guys? And what is it that, you know, where can we find Babewise? Yeah. Uh, LinkedIn is probably the best way to get a hold of uh, <laughs> myself and of Bryce. Um, my, my name, Michael Howie, H O W E Y. Um, I think it's just linkedin.com backslash Michael Howie, um, mm -hmm. Bryce, same thing. And Pavewise, uh, check out the website, pavewisepro.com. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're also on Twitter, LinkedIn and Facebook currently. Oh, and we have, as you know, we have a, a YouTube channel. And there's there's fun yes. stuff that comes up on that too. So definitely check us out on YouTube. Fantastic, uh, to your audience and listeners out there, make sure to check those places out. Connect with Howie, Michael Howie. Connect with Bryce as you can. Hopefully, we can get Bryce on the show sometime in the future as well. But Michael, thank you so much for your time here right now. Thank you so much for your energy. Thank you so much for the insight. And you know, we we learned a lot about asphalt today. I, I can't like I can't believe I said that. Like, uh, the future of asphalt and all the details of asphalt. And you know, it doesn't sound as boring as people might find it. You know, so Michael, thank you so much for your time, and to all our audience and listeners out there, see you on the next one. All right. So here's the thing. We try to get a little bit better every day, but we can't do it without you. So if you like the video, make sure to like and subscribe below. And if you have any comments, just leave them in the space under.